So this whole idea came about because I wanted like a fun street photography camera and I was thinking of getting one of those Leicas or Fujifilm cameras that I see everybody using. And then I looked at the price and that completely changed my mind. I don't have $5,000 of fun money and I've got plenty of cameras. My EOS R takes beautiful pictures. I just don't really use it for pictures. It stays sitting in my streaming setup most of the time. And it's got enough lenses to last me a lifetime. I just wanted something kind of fun and compact that I can leave in my jacket pocket. So I started looking into like more lenses for my EOS R that would make it more pocketable. And then I started thinking those pictures are like really crisp and clean and you can like add stuff to it to make it feel more like filmic, but I don't wanna do like post stuff. I just want a camera that has like some texture and takes some fun pictures. So somehow that landed me on this. This is the first camera that I ever used for YouTube. It came out in I think 2011. It's called the Sony Nex 5N. It served me well over a decade ago. It's got kind of a tilty screen. It doesn't flip at all, but it's perfectly pocketable. This was one of Sony's first mirrorless cameras. It might've been the second. It was definitely within the first line of mirrorless cameras. And when I got this thing, I got an open box at Best Buy. So it was already used. I think it was like $400 when I got it. Oh, almost dropped it. And it came with the kit lens. I pretty soon after that upgraded to this 16 millimeter. And this is a very fun camera to use. Oh, of course you're not gonna turn on now, are you? Oh, there's no battery. Shit. Got the battery. Okay, so this is a fun camera to use because listen to this. The shutter is so loud and you feel it like vibrate when the shutter smacks down. I'm old enough to remember when mirrorless cameras started to be a thing. Photographers complained about how it didn't feel right that there wasn't like a giant mirror in there flipping around. But that's not the main reason I started using this again. I didn't want like super sharp images. I wanted a little bit of texture. And this camera is over a decade old, so we were, we're definitely not gonna get sharp images out of this. It's a little dark already. We're allowed to have dogs because it's winter time. It's a year round. Oh. <laughs> I decided I wanted to get one of these Tiffin black Pro Mist filters. This is the only thing that I purchased additionally for this camera, aside from I had to get a new charger because I lost mine. When I was looking up about Pro Mists, there were a lot of YouTube videos that were just saying, don't get a Pro Mist, stop using Pro Mists. That's just because that sort of style is overused. I'm not like a, that into photography. So I've never used one and it, it's, it's fun it's, it, I think the pictures look great. So I'm gonna use it. This was 50 bucks, which is a little bit of a lot of money to spend on a decade old camera. I also went into the settings and made sure I turned off all of the like digital cleanup settings. Like I want there to be noise and I don't want it to try to compensate for the lens vignetting. I don't even know how to get into the settings. I forget every time that I, I hate Sony's menus and they weren't good a decade ago either. I'm not sure what all this is about on the screen here, but you can't really see it when it's on. There you go, lens compensation off, chromatic aberration off, distortion off. And since I wanted to use this for like street photography, it's really just me walking out and about, like hanging out with friends and stuff. I wanna be able to pull this out and capture a moment instantly. So I don't wanna futz around with dials and stuff, which is great because this has no dials on it at all. That was a bit of a pain in the ass to set up. I have it in aperture priority mode. So the aperture is locked at an F 2.8, which is fine. I do that on most of my videos anyway, because I like a little bit of a bokeh out background. So the shutter speed will vary and the ISO will vary. Those are both on auto. The shutter speed pretty much stays where I want it. If it's really, really dark somewhere, it will open up a lot and then you might get more of a smudged or blurry image. But again, we want those sort of flaws. <laughs> I also want the white balance on auto because again, I don't want to futz around. 
but I want the images to be relatively warm because I want it to mimic sort of like a vintage style, maybe kind of filmic. So I went into the creative styles and I figured that sunset is pretty much what I want. It kind of just puts like an orange tint to everything. I might have adjusted it further. I did minus two contrast, minus two saturation, and then minus three sharpness. Because again, I don't really want it to be sharp at all. I set it up so pretty much all I have to do is point in the direction I want and click it. The autofocus is good enough where I usually don't have to play with it much. Love the view light. <laughs> Hi, baby. Hi, sweetheart. Oh. Yeah, you're getting old, you. <laughs> <laughs> and this black pro mist absolutely helps to blow out all of the white lights. And that really, really helps for the sort of style that I wanted to go with. And it turns out it is a lot of fun to shoot with this thing. I don't do much adjustment. I just point and I, I go like that and then we're good. And if it's a little dark or a little too orange, it's really not a big deal. If I wanted to shoot something for print, I would use my EOS R. I don't need this for that. I need this for texture. I need this for some character in my pictures. I need this so that I can just pull it out when I'm hanging out with people and just snap a picture. And that's it. I literally just turned it on and snapped and it was good to go. Another thing that's really annoying is that it's a fixed lens, so I can't like zoom in and stuff. So I have to walk right up to stuff. It's in 16 millimeter. Oh my God. That's why I'm getting so close to stuff. And I'm frequently happy with the results. Of course, it's not taking a good picture every time. It's like one in 10 times, but that's photography, baby. I will be carrying this around with me a lot more now. It's way more fun than taking iPhone pictures. Look at how friggin' beat up this thing is. This thing's gonna fall apart by the time I'm done with it. I do shoot a RAW and a JPEG. They both look very different when I'm checking out the preview in Finder. But it's nice to just have a version I could text to somebody or throw on Twitter. And it's nice to have a RAW that I can manipulate later. This is, of course, like a 12-year-old RAW format. So don't expect too much quality out of that. And I can just throw it around without having to worry too much about it. Again, it does the job of giving me that vintage look and it makes a lot of sense. I am willing to admit that 12 years old is probably vintage. My generation busted out film cameras to try to get a vintage look. All the, all the kids these days are gonna be busting out early, old, shitty digital cameras to get that vintage look. Anyway, let me know if there's other fun little easy things I can do with this thing to, to take some fun pictures and get a, a cool look out of it. Hopefully this inspired you to dust off one of your old expensive products that you can futz around with and make sure you subscribe here for when I randomly once a year decide to post a video. Maybe I'll do more.